Yes, the test of sufficient progress in the Brexit negotiation has been met and European leaders signalled this afternoon that they are now prepared to move on to the next phase, the all-important phase of developing a future relationship once the UK leaves the EU in March 2019. The Prime Minister, Theresa May, called this an important step on the road to a smooth and orderly Brexit, but the President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, warned that the second phase will be considerably harder than the first. Let's listen to We have had a meeting with the uh, group of the European parliamentarians being involved in this and uh, so we were able to conclude that sufficient progress has been made. Now it's up to us to draft the withdrawal agreement together with our British friends and I hope that this withdrawal treaty will be approved and by the European Parliament and by the House in London. Jean-Claude Juncker there, the European Commission President. Well, in the last, last hour, the European Council President, Donald Tusk, has given his reaction to today's agreement. Opening the second phase of our negotiations wouldn't be possible without the unity of the EU27. The hard work of Michel Barnier and the constructive effort of Prime Minister May. As for the framework for future relations, it is now time for internal EU27 preparations and exploratory contacts with the UK to get more clarity on their vision. On that basis, we should adopt guidelines and start negotiations next year. Music to the ears of the British Prime Minister Theresa May. In the past hour in her constituency, she has been giving her reaction to the news. This is an important step on the road to delivering the smooth and orderly Brexit that people voted for in June of last year. And the UK and the EU have shown what can be achieved by commitment and perseverance on both sides. I'm pleased that it's been agreed we should make rapid progress on an implementation period which will give certainty to businesses and individuals. There's still more to do, but we're well on the road to delivering a Brexit that will make Britain prosperous, strong and secure. So will it, will, will it really be Brexit in 2019 if we have to accept free movement and ECJ jurisdiction, jurisdiction and pay during the transition? What people voted for last year was for us to leave the European Union and we will leave the EU on the 29th of March 2019. I think people also want us to do that in a smooth and orderly way that doesn't disrupt people's lives and doesn't disrupt businesses. And that's what we'll be delivering. We'll be delivering the Brexit that people voted for. Um, are you worried that there will be no proper trade talks until after March and that a final trade deal can only be finalised after we've left the EU in March 2019? No, we will be beginning the talks about our future relationship. We'll be beginning those straight away and also talking about the implementation period that will give certainty to businesses and individuals. We're leaving the European Union on the 29th of March 2019. We will uh, set up and uh, negotiate a new trade deal with the European Union, but also we'll be negotiating trade deals with other countries around the world. This is about building a Britain that is fit for the future. Let me just bring you a little bit of clarity on that last point that the Prime Minister was talking about there, about discussing in parallel the transition and how that will work also with the framework of the future trade negotiation, the future trade deal. What they're saying here is that they will come up with new guidelines in March that will define that negotiation. But in the background, across the road here in the European Commission, they'll be able to start the groundwork for those talks. So it's not specifically talks about the future relationship. It's the work that will be going on in the background. But then that probably does suit the Prime Minister because, of course, she hasn't had the conversation yet with her own cabinet. She's got to bring the Brexiteers and the Remainers around the table to, to formulate a particular plan and until they do that then really uh, the European Union is at a loss as to what sort of negotiation it's going to be. Uh, another couple of important details there's a sort of discussion ongoing at the moment on social media about whether through that transition period the UK will be able to go away and talk to other countries about its trade deals. Uh, the Commission is briefing in the background here that strictly speaking the UK will have lost left the European Union in March 2019 so it will be able to talk to other countries but because it's going to be um, following the EU rules, the single market, the customs union, it won't be able to sign any deals. So the discussions will go on 
but uh, they won't be able to talk and, and, and sign specifically those deals. So a bit of clarity there from the Commission. Let's speak to Marcus Becker. He is the Europe correspondent for Der Spiegel. Uh, you've been to the German press conference, Angela Merkel, uh, standing alongside Emmanuel Macron this afternoon. What was she saying about the course of the, the second phase of this nego negotiation? Well, uh, first of all, uh, she emphasized that uh, it would be bad for everybody, the EU and Britain, if the EU would allow itself to get uh, separated uh, to along specific, uh, specific national interests. And uh, the second thing uh, she said is that the uh, UK really has to make uh, its mind up uh, about what uh, is going to uh, what the future is going to be what it wants for the future relationship with the eu yeah it's an interesting point you make in the first instance about the 27 countries staying united really they've let michel barnier take the lead in the divorce proceedings but now it comes to the future relationship with the uk different countries want different things the eastern europeans want to talk about defense perhaps france and spain want to talk about fisheries the germans perhaps want to talk about the car industry how are they going to keep them all together well it might be difficult and some actually here fear that uh, the eu might uh, there might be cracks in in the eu front however uh, there is a very strong interest uh, for everybody in the EU27 to keep uh, the EU together, which is the single market and the customs union. And uh, you just mentioned the uh, German car industry. And what you hear from the German car industry is not what people were hoping for in Britain, that they would intervene at a point and make Merkel assume a softer stance toward, uh, towards uh, the United Kingdom. But right, the contrary is the case. They say that uh, it is much more important to keep the integrity of the single market than to give the uh, UK a good deal. And if giving the UK a bad deal or have a hard Brexit is the price for keep uh, uh, the uh, to protect the single market, then so be it. Mm. What did you make of the dynamic between Emmanuel Macron and the Chancellor this afternoon? Because she's she is the queen of the of the hall when she comes here, and what she says really goes. We all know that. But Emmanuel Macron is starting to carve out a niche for himself, and of course she doesn't have a coalition back at home. Has she been supplanted by the French president? Well, I'm, uh, I wouldn't say that she's going to getting supplanted because uh, she always knew and always was the case that without France. Uh, things are not going to work in the uh, in, in the EU, and uh, so I think she's quite happy that she now has a French president with whom she uh, can work better than with, like, uh, for example, the, his predecessor. François Hollande, yeah, especially yes, and uh, so um, she, and, uh, especially after the the last German elections, uh, Merkel has a little bit lost lost some of her power inside the EU, so it's very important for her to have a strong partner at her side. And what you're seeing here with the uh, dynamics between uh, the two of them seems to be quite positive and seems to go into the right direction. She lost a bit of power in Germany because of the migration issue and the numbers of people that she led into the country. Aside from Brexit, there's been, <laughs> been an extraordinary row that has broken out here uh, in the summit over the last two days about Eastern European countries not taking their quotas of migrants and she takes a particularly hard line on this what did she say well she said that uh, there cannot be a solidarity a la carte in the eu that uh, you can't have it that uh, eastern european countries for example count on the solidarity of the rest of the eu when it comes to eu funds of which eastern europeans get quite a lot and then at the same time deny solidarity when it comes to taking in uh, migrants or asylum seekers okay marcus really good to get your thoughts thank you thank you very much